Welcome back. WETCO is a nonprofit dedicating to fostering thriving neighborhoods by providing access to essential resources. The organization operates an after school program at PSIS 218 Rafael Hernandez Dual Language School, catering to over 450 students, emphasizing English language arts and STEM subjects. Joining us to tell us more is the education coordinator at WETCO, AI Iotiwa. So sorry. So thank you so much for joining us today. To start off, can you tell us a little bit about WETCO's after-school program at the PSIS 218 Rafael Hernandez Dual Language School? Well, thank you so much for having me this morning. So our program services over 450 students in the local area, focusing on grades K through 8. And what we do is we provide English language arts as well as STEM programming and as well as activities such as art, chess, and sports so that we can provide a holistic um, environment for our students. And so as an education coordinator, what does your role entail? So my role entails supporting staff with ELA as well as STEM curriculum, mm -hmm. as well as providing resources, as well as communicating with parents on how to best support their child uh, within our program. And so how do you and your team collaborate with the school uh, staff at PSIS 218 to ensure you're meeting the needs of students and the family? And what does that partnership look like? So we realize that as a, a school program, there might be some natural gaps that might happen during the school day because of limited time. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do is we try to fill in those gaps uh, by providing activities that might not be provided during the normal school day. So um, one initiative that we've uh, created is a one-on-one -on -one homework support program, mm -hmm. which allows us to give more reading and comprehension support for our students. And we know that especially since the pandemic, this has provide, prove, proven to be a real challenge uh, filling in these gaps. So we're doing the best we can to support the school day. You know, it's so funny. I wanted to bring up the pandemic because unfortunately many students across the country fell behind, whether you were elementary school, middle school, high school, college. Mm -hmm. I was a college student at that time. And so academically, it was a very, very challenging time. So mm -hmm. I can only imagine for mm -hmm. what the younger generations look like who can't necessarily, weren't in a space to teach themselves, right? So how have you seen that among the students, your work, and what are the steps that your program is taking to provide extra support? Okay, so we realize that many of the students are, have fallen behind when it comes to reading. Um, so providing extra support, having students uh, pulled out of class into a smaller group to work with our, our group leaders and, and specialists. Uh, we provide the necessary link between what they learn in the school day mm -hmm. and um, what we're providing. And that way we're able to fill in these gaps that we know uh, that will only happen if we work together mm -hmm. as a unit with the with 218's um, uh, school day program. And so with that, midwinter break is coming up, right? Mm -hmm. So the schools are closing the week of February 19th. So what does programming with WETCO look like? So our programming is quite exciting. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is uh, providing our students um, a full day program, similar to a school day from 8 to 5 p.m. And um, in addition to enrichment activities such as chess, arts, sports, we're also uh, providing some academic uh, learning as well, uh, reading as well as STEM. And this way we're giving our, the students an entire day of, of practical um, support as well as fun. I think that's really amazing for the kids because even when you go on just that one week break, unfortunately you do miss out on a lot, but then it's also not the most enticing to mm -hmm. have them learn and do educational activities during the actual school you know, their break, their week off. So I think that's a really great balance. But with that, you know, for the kids who don't have access to a program like WETCO, mm -hmm. what suggestions do you have for things that parents can do with their kids to keep their brains engaged during the week off from school? That's a great question. You know, the great thing is that parents can help students, um, their children with reading throughout the day. So libraries will still be open so they can feel free to take their child to the local library. Many libraries have support systems and programs such as story time, board games, arts and crafts. So they, that's another source that parents can use. Uh, in WETCO, we like to use a uh, website called EPIC. Many programs, uh, schools already use this program, so many mm -hmm. parents might be familiar with it. And what it is is a platform where um, 
there are m multiple books on varied uh, subjects and grade levels that parents can, um, can uh, read with their children. And for students who are more independent with reading, parents can choose to uh, ask comprehension questions. Mm -hmm. um, ask the students, what did they learn? Um, and start conversation, helping them to build their critical thinking skills. And so f the app specifically, you know, sometimes not every single household is the most uh, technologically efficient. Mm. So even for the parents who aren't the greatest with technology, is this still an accessible app to use? Is it still something that's easy to log on to? And if not, where can they find help? Well, absolutely. It's very, um, it is very easy to access. Um, they can also go to the local library where um, many libraries provide free internet and free computers. Um, for parents to use, but that's not the only resource that parents can use during this time. Um, one very important resource is to get out and exercise. <laughs> Go to a local park, um, help students, uh, help their children to build social connections. We know that during the pandemic, that's one of the issues that I think all of us face, right? We lost that face-to-face -face time yeah. with, with others. So helping their children to fill in those gaps by also providing some physical activity at a local park that could be something that regardless of, of access to internet mm -hmm. that parents can do with their children to provide that extra support during the week-long break. Right, and so we're in, I think, a generation where the younger, I'd say the younger school-age kids love their screen time. They love their <laughs> tablets, they love their phones, they love their computers. I can go on for days just on what I've seen through social media and through all of that. So what are some ways that parents can make sure their kids don't spend too much time on the screen during their break? Yes, well, another way in, the, in addition to taking them outside for physical activity mm -hmm. is to work on some arts and crafts with yeah. them. Um, one website that I particularly enjoy is called Left Brain um, Craft Brain, and on it there's multiple resources that parents can use with simple household items mm -hmm. to be able to create um, some, uh, help students to create something with their hands, which yeah. limits that time, that screen time. And as and doing Redco, we like to use a program, a curriculum called Engineering Challenges, okay. where we use simple household items such as paper clips. Uh, paper, mm -hmm. tape, scissors, and we create fun things like yeah. uh, cars and roller coasters and buildings, and we've simulated creating cities. All of this um, in an effort to help students use their hands, get a bit of physical activity, and, and also limit screen time. I think that's so important, and I look back to back when I was in school, and those breaks it was the perfect time to mm -hmm. kind of foster that creativity because that's not something that we necessarily had time for with mm -hmm. school and the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So it was really important for the parents and teachers to kind of work together so that way when we went back to school, we were still actively stimulated and were able to go back in and kind of be engaged for the rest of that school year. So I think that's really important and I really appreciate the accessibility to it, right? Mm -hmm. These are simple things that you would normally have in your house anyways. So you're able to create the, these projects and then so that way when you go back to school, it's not like this big jump of, okay, what do I got to kind of get my brain working back again. Um, but, you know, any more tips for parents who may want to foster creativity in their kids, whether it's through visual arts, exercising, you know, what tips do you have? Well, we also, I also recommend um, taking their child on to a field trip. Okay. Students love <laughs> field trips. We <laughs> see that. So um, it's nice when a parent can take their child to a local, mm -hmm. say, zoo. Here we have the Bronx Zoo, yeah. which is very accessible. We have the Botanical Garden here mm -hmm. in the Bronx. We also have the Bronx Children's Museum. Um, and for, even for extra credit, some parents can ask their students to write a journal to, um, to learn, to express their feelings about how they felt on the trip and mm -hmm. kind of merge what they saw with their personal creativity. Maybe they could draw, if it's yeah. younger, a, a younger uh, student, what they saw, bring the journal with them and kind of um, document the field trip. So that's another way that parents can, can engage their child in something exciting, um, hands-on, and gives that social connection as well that mm -hmm. children are, many children are lacking. Absolutely. And what is some maybe advice or some recommendations that you have for parents that are kind of, I don't want to say stressed, but always anxious when, it, when their children are going into break? Because it's, how do I keep them entertained mm -hmm. for so long? You know, you have the kids in the house. It, it is for a week. But, you know, when, they're, when you're used to having them in school for eight hours a day, when they're now home 
24 hours, you know, what are some of the recommendations or some advice that you have? You know, what works for us, uh, even at Redco during the school day, is to have an agenda. Okay. Students like to see what's happening in the morning, in the afternoon, and, in, and for supper. And mm -hmm. the reason why is because it creates excitement. It yeah. helps them be patient because they know they're looking forward to something. So maybe a parent can create a calendar. Monday, we'll go, we'll go to the library and, and grab a new book. Tuesday, mm -hmm. we'll take a field trip to the Bronx Zoo. Wednesday, we'll create a DIY um, activity on mm -hmm. left you know, brain, craft brain. Maybe we'll take another field trip during the week. And then have an agenda so that students can see the week at a glance yeah. and build excitement. You know? And then maybe Friday could be a day where they wrap everything up where the, the parents review the week and also prepare um, any packets or anything that the students might have received from the teacher as well, because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's important as well, yeah. and um, kind of really be there to support their child holistically. That, I think that is such a great piece of advice. I think that's such a great idea to kind of keep that structure, not so strict and so enforced, but you do have that structure there. So with that, EA, I want to thank you so much again for joining us and for sharing this with us. Thank you. For more information, you can visit their website at wetco.org and follow them on Instagram and Twitter at Wetco Speaks. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more open right after this.